I'm excited to show you a new two two beta feature. We usually don't, I don't usually don't do videos for beta, but this is uh, pulling all the stops for this this beta release on the new Pi connectivity uh, for high bytes. So in this video a series of videos, I'm going to show you kind of how that works in terms of architecture, how to connect, how to read, how to write, some of the cool features that are in there, so that folks playing around with the beta can use those pretty quickly. Hopefully with the help of these videos. So uh, what you're going to want is to download the, the main installer for HiByte. And I've done that here. And if you open it up, you'll see in the Tutu beta, we've got the typical install directory, as well as this new uh, Pi connector. And in the beta, we've kind of embedded this installer in the other one. In release, we'll probably have them be separate deliverables. So if you're using the Docker image and you want to use Pi, uh, for the Pi component, make sure you download the regular image to get this connector. And what I've done is I've unzipped these both on my desktop. So we have the normal high byte installation, which I'm just going to kick off here, uh, get that going. And then we've got the, the what we call the Pi agent, right? And the Pi agent is, uh, it uses the Pi asset framework SDK. Oops, I already had it running, so it closed out. Uh, it uses the Pi asset framework SDK to connect into the Pi archive and the Pi asset framework. So the agent uh, does require Windows. Right, it's a separate executable. It's going to run on your AFSDK server that has access to Pi. And by AFSDK server, when you install that toolkit, you know, you'll have Pi System Explorer and all the other tools, uh, which it's going to bring up here to connect and configure Pi. So that Pi System Explorer is what you're going to use to control what databases, et cetera, you have access to. And then the agent's going to connect into that. So our agent is an executable. You can, and I would recommend you install it as a service. Uh, it's all .NET based. So if I open up our uh, help thing, or help file, user guide, and I go down to Appendix D, it'll talk about the agent. It does require .NET 4.8 or greater. It does require the system it's installed on to have the AFSDK installed. Uh, and it, it's a Windows operating system. But here's the instructions on installing it as a service. Pretty easy to do. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to run it as the executable. Now, I've got Pi out in an EC2 instance. Uh, and then what this is doing, I have my asset framework SDK configured to connect to that. This agent is a .NET service that comes up and listens on a port uh, and then provides a token. So if you go in here in the settings JSON, you'll see there's a port that you can configure. If you change this, you have to restart. Uh, and then a default generated token that we'll use. And you can change this token to whatever you want or use the default. So now the agent is up and running. Let me show you how to connect HiByte to it. So what I'm going to do is bring up uh, the browser, 45.245, to connect to my HiByte instance. And uh, I've got one here. I'm going to delete this just to start from scratch. So now, you know, whether I'm running from Docker or I'm running the standalone installation, everything's the same after, at the, uh, after this point. So OSI soft, Pi SDK. So this is going to connect to the agent. So I need to be able to access the agent, which is on my local machine currently, on this default port. So I go next. The next piece of info you'll need is that settings file. If I can find it. So you'll want to open that up. And we connect to the agent securely. It's, it's using secure web sockets. It's basically how that works. Uh, so paste in the token. The request timeout is how long we'll wait for Pi to respond. Depending on your Pi system, it can take a while. At defaults 30 seconds, you might need to increase it if, if the system's slow. In my case, I have a pretty uh, slow system. I didn't put it on very beefy hardware uh, in EC2. So I've got my connection going. Let's briefly check just to make sure that it works by doing a really simple read. And then I'll jump to another video uh, on reads and writes. So in reads, really quick, we have the ability to read different types of data. In this case, I'm just going to add if I can spell it, sinusoid is a, is a point for one of their default interfaces. So I'm just going to read the current value of that. I'm going to hit my read. And the first read can take a little bit. It's got to initialize the connection and everything. And if I pull that down, you'll see that I read sinusoid with a value and a timestamp. So that means I'm connected and I'm pulling data from the Pi archive. So I'm going to pause here. In the next video, we'll pick up from there on some of the read capabilities that we have in the beta and how to leverage those.